welcome to another booktube video from me lauren from lauren and the books i hope you're all doing very well easter sunday i think this is going up happy easter to those that celebrate happy last day of march no more green for me after this i've been setting myself a um fashion challenge uh, to read some uh, to read to wear something green every day throughout march because of the irish readathon and st patrick's day and all sorts of things but i tell you what i'm looking forward to wearing some other colors but this is lovely isn't it this is from um, Marks and Spencer's. I bought it for a wedding about six years ago and I love it. I wear it all the time for all sorts of different things. Anyway, you're not here about my dress. You're here to hear about what my reading's been like this month. So I'm going to be discussing in this here video, two, four, six, eight, ten books that I've read in April. Uh, in March <laughs> um, and at the moment I'm filming this on Wednesday the 27th of March and I'm about to go into an Easter weekend reading vlog which encapsulates the end of March so there will still be some books read in March keep your eye out for that I haven't told David about this yet reading for 24 hours in an Easter weekend oh, well this weekend yeah but it's six hours a day, David. It's completely manageable. It'll be fine. Sometimes when I do these reading for a certain amount of time vlogs, I just ignore David for the whole weekend. But I'm not going to do that this time because we've also got other plans on. That's why so I'll be busy eating chocolate. He'll anyway, be busy so. eating his Easter eggs, doing all his Easter egg hunts, all his uh, Easter bunny business. Are you the Easter bunny? Yeah. He is. Um, so, yeah, so there will be more books that have been read in March. I urge you to keep your eye out for the reading for 24 hours in an Easter weekend. Will she do it? Who knows? Let me know down below if you think I'll do it. But let's talk about the 10 books that I've read in the month of March. Now, as always, Irish books here because of the Irish Readathon. Also, the beginnings of um, reading the Women's Prize for Fiction Longlist. The first book I read was an audiobook of Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. What I will say, and I mentioned this on Instagram the other day, anything that has scored higher than a 3.5 this year has been a reread. So this year hasn't been great. And like, we're at the end of March now for books that are really staying with me if I haven't read them before. So this scored a four star, um, but I have read this before. I, this was the first time I've come to it in um, audio form and I, I loved it in audio form, but um, I have read this before and I read it in a book form before. So. Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. Claire Keegan seems to be the absolute queen of a novella. I read um, At That Time in the Day, what was it called? The whole of her, um, all of her books, have, oh, So Late in the Day in January. And I've got Foster, another novella of hers to read probably this weekend in that very mentioned Easter weekend reading vlog. Um, she writes amazing sort of... <sighs> De extraordinary and ordinary lives. So she takes the life in this book of a chap who has four daughters at home and a wife. He runs a, um, a coal business where he provides coal to the villages around him, uh, to the villagers around him in the, in the village that he lives and works in. Um, and yeah, we really focus in on his life. Oh, oh Furlong is his name. Um, there's also a nun, uh, like a mother and baby home in the village and a lot of the focus of the story is around that mother and baby home but but the real focus of the story is on furlong and his sort of day-to-day -day lives and him going around and collecting money this is written in the run-up to christmas it's so quietly gently done that before you know it it's over and these people will be with you forever. It's also being made into a film this year. I wonder what they're gonna do with it. It's already been filmed, it's got Killian Murphy in it. I wonder if it's gonna be short or if they're gonna pad it out a bit or if this is going to be it. It's just those few days on the run up to. But yeah, it's really something special and twinkly and sort of stays with you. Um, and I thought that the first time around, but having listened to it as well, just amazing. So very much looking forward to reading Foster this weekend. The next book I read was The Amendments by Neve Mulvey. This is out this year, April 2024. I wonder if this might make the Women's Prize for Fiction Long List next year. Maybe, so it won't be out by the time you're reading this, but it'll be out very soon. Um, and we are following uh, three women uh, at various times in Ireland, uh, in modern day, in the 2000s, and in 1983. Um, and each of these uh, women have a very sort of um, complicated relationship with, with their mother or with motherhood, uh, with the prospect of motherhood, um, and with sort of belonging, I guess, is the best way I would describe it. I remember enjoying it when I was reading it, but 
not much has stayed with me so I gave it three stars and if I'm being honest I had to really really think hard about the three I knew there was three women that were discussed in here and I remembered Nell um, who is about to have a baby with her wife Adrienne Dolores who is Nell's mother and then I was trying to wrap my brains to think of who that last person was and it's somebody called Martina and we're following her in a sort of religious um, I don't want to say cult because it is a religious group um, but yeah you follow a lot of stuff about the early like the first wave feminism and things of things like that but it hasn't stayed with me sadly so that is what I have to say on that the next one however has stayed with me and that's the Queen of Dirt Island by Donald Ryan this felt really cleverly done every single chapter and I don't know if this is correct or if there's if, if this was in, well, it must have been intentional because no way would you have a book where every single chapter is one like just that sort of double page it must be that each of these chapters has got the same amount of words in or something like that and if that's the case then that's an extraordinary feat so you're in Nina in County Tipperary and you're following uh, four generations of the Elwood women all living in this house um, and the people around them and their lives and their relationships with people around them and people sort of coming and going and oh David I thought you were really looking at me and, and having a lovely time but you weren't you were staring that way but it really looked like you were looking at me out of the corner of my eyes well oh maybe he wants to read this next that's what it felt like um but yeah so um Sersha is the um so sorry I'll, I'll, I'll run through the the lovely women so uh we're following Nana um her daughter-in-law Eileen Eileen's daughter Sersha and then her daughter um, and you're following the supporting cast around that but yeah it just felt really specially done something to do with those short chapters and everything being the same um, also the way that they speak to each other this this happened for me in two books uh, this uh, this month was that the the way that the Irish speak and their sort of turn of phrase and their colloquialisms and things like that are just it's just captured beautifully in this book and in another one that I read later on that this month so yeah I really really loved it and I just found it very immersive um, so yeah very much enjoyed it and enjoying um, I'm looking forward to reading more Donnell Ryan stuff next one up is uh, You Don't Know What War Is by Yeva Skalietska this is the diary of a young girl from Ukraine um, this uh, uh, young girl now is in living in Ireland with her grandmother but we follow um, the Ukrainian war from her perspective from the very first days even the whispers of it may be potentially happening it's an amazingly pulled together piece of work that really reminded me of um, when Hitler stole Pink Rabbit by Judith Kerr in some ways like in a in a lovely way because I love that book but also in a sort of horrifying way that this sort of thing is happening that was happening like during the second world war and those sort of experiences are reflected in here her having to flee where she lives there being uncertainty her having to pick what um, belonging she wants to take but as well as all of that there's sort of it's punctuated with headlines so every section is uh, every day it's punctuated with headlines from the newspapers that day there's maps of where she's going there's transcribes of text messages between her and her classmates and how they're feeling and how their journeys are going pictures of her being inside uh, basements and stuff like that and then later on pictures of her and her grandmother's apartment um since they've left it and like what what the state it's in now and yeah just an amazing feat that this young woman is able to pull together all of her thoughts at the time like writing in her diary whilst this is going on and then the experience of having to relive that troubling time and pop it all in this book just an amazing piece and very very like so, so like sad feels like an understatement because that's what's going on but also very uplifting in her journey and her overcoming these things and taking these amazing things just in her stride so yeah I really thought this was beautifully done um and I would sort of urge people to read it really um particularly if you enjoyed when Hitler stole Pink Rabbit but yeah I thought this was wonderful I'm going to be lending it to my sister because I think she will enjoy it very much uh next up was the first of the women's prize for fiction long list that I read um and this was River East River West by Aubrey Lescure um I listened to the audiobook of this this was fine um I gave it 2.5 um and it is the story of a woman called a young woman called Alba you're hearing from her perspective um, of her um, living in China with her mother and her stepfather and then you're also hearing from her stepfather's point of view and what his life was like being Chinese and living in China I should have mentioned Alba's mother is um, is um, um, originally American so and Alba's father is Chinese but you never hear from Alba's father so yeah you're hearing sort of like two perspectives of sort of like coming of age from two um, very different people at different times in China um, 
I, I, the thing is, is that I was yearning all the time. I was listening to um, the, the stepfather's point of view. I was yearning to get back to Alva's point of view because that was the point of view I was enjoying more. Then something really horrific happened in Alva's point of view. And I thought, oh God, now I don't want to hear from anyone <laughs> because it all was just so sort of traumatic. Um, I would say trigger <laughs> spoilers and trigger warnings for sexual assault. But yeah. It was fine. Again, I don't think it's going to stay with me. I mean, I only finished it on the 18th, like less than 10 days ago. And already I'm like, oh, I'm trying to reach for those details. So yeah, not, not, a, it was, it wasn't the banger that I hoped to open that women's prize for fiction long list with. Uh, next up was a banger though. It was an audio book that I was uh, listening to, a book that I've read before. And it was The Paying Guest by Sarah Waters. Sarah Waters' books are just amazing like Fingersmith is one of my favorite books of all times I would go as far as to say like The Paying Guests I have included it on my best books of the year before and yeah again if, if I was thinking about the best books that I've read this year and taking into consideration rereads then I would definitely be including The Paying Guests but it's already appeared there it's a fantastic work of historical fiction as are all Sarah Walters books done with immaculate research and you just feel like you're there in the time um this is about uh, two women uh, one woman who her, lives at home with her mother um and they have fallen on sort of financial hardships after the war and are now renting out a couple of rooms in their house um the other perspective you're hearing from is uh, from a woman called lillian and it's her and her husband that are renting these rooms in their in the house and you're hearing about these two um these two perspectives and you're hearing about the sort of how difficult it is to um, to have these people living in your house and uh, their background and the, the loss of their uh, of the father of the family and the, the two boys who were killed in the war um, and then the adjustments they're having to make and then you're hearing from Lillian and her husband and what that's like and um, living in somebody else's rooms and like a bit of background on their lives and stuff like that and then something happens halfway through this book that you're just like oh my god and then that the rest of the book is the fallout from that. It's amazing sort of queer representation. There's a wonderful sort of queer love story in here, but also sort of like passion story. There's a lot of like sexual tension and lust and things like that. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it again. And the audiobooks of these Sarah Waters books are phenomenal. Like I listened to the audiobook of Fingersmith um, and absolutely adored that. Um, I need to, I keep saying to myself, oh, I will get round to read because I've, I've read all, all of the Sarah Waters, um, of all of the books now. Sadly, the last one I read was the one I really didn't enjoy. I'm trying to think what that one's called. It's about the one with the prison and there's a, a um, psychic in prison. What was that one called? We read it for, audio, uh, for um, Patreon Book Club. But yeah, that was the one that I enjoyed least. But everything else has been an absolute banger. So I, I need to get into revisiting some more Sarah Waters. But yeah, would highly recommend Paying Guess. It's a big chunky, but it's worth it. 4.5 stars I gave that, but a reread. Uh, next up was Carla by Colin Walsh. Uh, this was the book we read for Patreon Book Club this month. Um, and I mentioned when I was discussing the Donnell Ryan book that there was two books this month that really captured me in terms of um, the way that speech is dealt with, particularly um, with the Irish accent and Irish colloquialisms and things like that. And this just had that done so perfectly and in droves I loved reading about it particularly in the chapters from the perspective of uh, Joe and Mush both which names will mean nothing to you because I haven't told you anything about the plot yet so the plot is is that Carla um, is a young girl um, so at age 15 who went missing uh, she was in a group of six friends um, and now you're hearing about um, about Carla and that those times then and then now 15 years later from the perspective of some of the people in that group um, one of them is called Joe. Um, he ended up being a famous musician and has returned to his hometown to sort of like inject a bit of um, interest and money into his hometown. You're also hearing about Helen, who's a journalist, um, who's been away and come back. And then you're hearing from Mush, who has been in the, um, in the town the whole time. And yeah, there's sort of like criminal gangs and things going on and sort of weavy bits about what did happen to Carla. Is she still alive? And then um, human remains are found um, and then we sort of investigate from then onwards. Um, I started reading this with such sort of like hope and thinking, this is it, this is where my reading starts. It's gonna be brilliant. This is gonna be my first five star read. Some of the some of the, um, the writing in here is absolutely beautiful and brilliant. And in a sort of like literary thriller type vibe, the, the plot felt a lot slower than it does when I've read other thrillers. Um, and I did enjoy it. I gave it three stars. That means it was good. I liked it. Um, but it just, somewhere along the line, it just didn't give that extra lift for me. Um, 
But yeah, the actual thrill a bit of it, I didn't see it coming, what was happening. I found the ending a bit confusing and had to like Google what other people had thought. Um, but yeah, this scored this has scored highest so far um, this year for our Patreon book club. So yeah, some absolutely loved it. So, and I've seen like, it was Mercedes best book of the year last year. I've seen other booktubers rave about it. So yeah, I still liked it, but I didn't love it. Uh, next up, a book I did very much enjoy, and this was a 3.5 star, and I wonder with a bit of distance if it might creep up to a four, and that was the second book that I read from the Women's Prize for Fiction long list, um, and that's uh, Night Bloom by Pete Adzo Medi, um, and it's gone back to the library now, as so I don't have it here. Um, but yeah, a great book. First of all, sort of cousin representation. You may well know that I'm very good pals with my cousin, spend a lot of time with her, and I don't feel like I read many books that have cousins in. So this was very fun to read a book about cousins. However, these cousins aren't like my cousin Laura and I. They're cousins where they don't talk at all now. So you hear about their early lives living in Ghana and um, how different their lives sort of like go elsewhere. What I thought was very clever is that you hear from both uh, both cousins. So you hear from um, Akorfa and Selassie, but the book is split in that the first half of the book is all Akorfa. So by the time you get to the end of the, the first half of the book, you're like, right, well, that's the story then, isn't it? Selassie seems a bit, a, a, a bit ungrateful, a bit this, a bit that. I'm not too keen on Akorfa either. And then you hear about it from Selassie's point of view and you're like, oh so this is how stuff went down so i thought it was a very clever thing to do rather than to sort of span between one chapter of this and one chapter one chapter from a core for one chapter from selassie i loved that sort of like split right down the middle and I, I i was trying to wrap my brain as to when i'd read a book like that where you hear about one big chunk and then you basically get the same book again things like um fork off at one point because they fork off <laughs> because one um, path goes one way and one path goes another way um and then the last uh, few chapters are from Selassie and Okorfa when they come back together um I listened to um the stacked podcast um where they were talking to Peace Adzo Medi and she actually said that the book originally was written all from the perspective of Selassie um so I'm really pleased and like would enjoyed hearing about the creative experience of deciding to add in the Okorfa um point of view but yeah it was great. It was great to hear about um, experiences from um, women other th that have grown up in different circumstances other than myself. There's uh, get trigger warnings for sexual assault and for racism um, and violence against women. Um, but I, I enjoyed this a lot. And like I said, I feel like it might creep up there to the four star. So out of the three books that I've read from the Women's Prize for Fiction long list so far, this is the only one that I, I would say is worthy of a place on the, um, on the short list so far. But yeah, very much enjoyed it. Uh, next up, one that I didn't so much enjoy, and that's Promise, by, Promise, Buys, <laughs> Promise Boys by Nick Brooks. Um, we are discussing this for um, Choir Book Club tonight. I run a book club at my choir. I need to send a message actually reminding everybody this. Uh, David and I have both read this, so David will be joining in with Choir Book Club tonight, which is very exciting. He's gonna get spoilers of what my thoughts are now, although we were discussing it throughout. Um, I did not get on with this at all. So this was a uh, YA thriller, and I use the term thriller loosely because I didn't feel thrilled at any point throughout, um, about the murder of a principal at a um, highly sort of regarded and very like, new sort of disciplined school. Um, the principal there gets murdered and you're following the three suspects and you're following sort of like character studies on uh, what people that go to school with them or around them think of them followed by their actions on the day and then followed by what happens on on the day and following the murder um it was so packed tight of so many characters point of views that i didn't really give a shit is the truth um and the interrogations so there's little bits of interrogations from each of those perspectives um i felt it, it felt to me a bit like a sort of creative writing project for someone who was like in year nine or something it all felt a bit lackluster um again something that upset david and this is a big spoiler for the book so please go away if you don't want to hear this uh, something that upset david about it was that um you go deep into these three suspects and then it ends up being someone that you don't really care about or haven't really heard from am i right in saying that david yes that's what yeah. annoyed you and I, that's I, I feel like a lot a lot of books i read that happens you feel cheated by yeah. it yeah because you're and, and i get it they're tr trying to focus on like these three boys of sort of different ethnic minorities and trying to pin that on them and then it ends up being someone who isn't a young boy in that ethnic minority but it just feels like it's been done and done to death doesn't it yeah. come back you can come back there's no more spoilers now um but yeah it was just just not for me i found it flat and 
I didn't get on with it at all. I'm I'm looking forward to discussing it tonight. Um, but yeah, all the things that I normally like in a book um, that sort of I feel like move the plot along in terms of like uh, newspaper articles or text messages or stuff like that. They felt very inserted here and it all just felt a bit lazy for me, which really surprised me because someone, one of my friends, this was one of his favourite books a couple of years ago. Um, but yeah, not for me, not for me. Looking forward to discussing it though. And then the last book that I've read this month so far, because remember what I said about that um, about that reading vlog that's coming up, uh, was Western Lane by Chetna Maru. And I, my, Maru, sorry, I literally finished it about, well, just before I started this video. Um, and this is the third book from the Women's Prize for Fiction long list that I've lis uh, read, listened to this. Um, I don't know if I did it a bit of a disservice, if I'm being honest. I um, It was only six hours long. I don't know how long that is in pages, but I sort of went to it, come back to it, went to it, come back to it. I don't feel like I dedicated enough time, but that being said, I couldn't feel any connection about it. It's about um, a young, you're hearing from a young girl's perspective um, whose mother has died um, and her father is uh, training her and her, her sister to be very good at squash, a sport that you don't hear all that much about, <laughs> strangely. Um, and it's supposed to be, well, it is about grief and about how that presents for different members of the family when your mother or your wife or your your sister-in-law has died but I just found I just felt no connection to this I found it hard to get in touch with and when I was listening to it I kept thinking so the, the sisterly relationship here I kept thinking about the cousins in Night Bloom because I was just thinking this would this is done so much better here rather than I'm not getting on with it here. So yeah, it wasn't for me either. I'd, when we had a brief discussion about this at uh, Patreon Book Club and a few people said that they DNF, DNF'd it. Um, I think it's shortlisted for the booker as well. But yeah, it wasn't for me. So those are the 10 books that I read um, in the month of March. So far, keep an eye out for that um, Easter reading vlog. Hopefully, I imagine if it had my first five star read of the year, I would fall off my bloody chair. Um, but yeah, those are the books that I've read this year and I'll see you all again soon for another book video.